Hi, I'm Joe Wang. I work in the ACA team at Lightbend. Today we're going to take a quick look at the new type actor APIs in ACA 2.6. Let's start with a short overview of the actor model. An actor encapsulates state and behavior. Other parts of the system can only interact with the actor by putting messages into a queue, the actor mailbox. The actor system then makes sure that the actor will process a single message at a time. When the actor processes a message, it can modify its state, it can switch to a new behavior for the next message, and it can send messages to other actors. Let's continue by actually implementing a Hello World actor in a sample project. In this sample, I have prepared a small project based on the Akka Quick Start Java project available from the Akka homepage. I'm going to use Java and Maven, but Akka also have a native Scala API and is possible to use from other languages on the JVM. Let's take a quick look at the POM file to see how to add Akka to a project. In the POM file, you can see that we have added the Akka actor typed dependency and a logger implementation. This is everything we need for this sample. We're going to implement an actor and work our way back from there to a runnable application. First step is to create a class to house the actor. To make this class the behavior of an actor, we're going to start by extending abstract behavior. Abstract behavior takes a type. The type specifies what kind of message the actor can receive. Best practice for defining the type of messages that the actor can receive is to define a nested marker interface as the top level of the messages. We can then go on and define the actual concrete messages that our actor will accept. We're going to define two kinds of messages. The first one will be the message that triggers the actor to say hello. Since the message won't have any parameters, we can define it as a single tone using an enum with a single value. The next message will have a parameter, what the new hello message should be. So let's define that as a class instead. The message is immutable, that means that it is not possible to change it after it has been constructed. All messages in Akka should be immutable. Since it is immutable, we can skip any getters and setters and instead define the fields as public final fields. We define a constructor that will accept the parameter. Next, we define the state of the actor. Since we can change the message with a command, we need to keep the message as a mutable field inside of the actor. We define an initial message so that we can say hello without having first received a change message. Now we will define the actual logic that is triggered when we receive a message. We do that by implementing the createReceive method. Defining the receive is done through a builder that we can create with the new receive builder method. For each message type that we will be able to receive, we will define a handler. For the first kind of message, the say hello message, we can look on the exact message rather than the type of the message and use on message equals. The next parameter to on message equals is a lambda that will be invoked whenever the message is received through the actor. Best practice is to define these callbacks as methods on the class rather than inline lambdas, as lambdas can grow very big quickly.
for the on say hello command, we will simply print out the current message. When we are done processing the command, we must also say which behavior will be used for the next message that the actor receives. In this case, we are not switching behaviors, so we will simply return the current behavior, which is the instance of the Hello World class itself. When we receive the change message, we will match the message on its type, and then we will look at the fields of the class. The only thing that we will do when we receive the change message command is to replace the current message when the, with the message in the command. For the change message command, we will also want to stay with this same behavior. Finally, we will need to complete the builder by calling build. Now there's just two small things to do before the actor is complete. The first thing is to define a default constructor. I'm going to make it private because the next step will be to make a public factory method. The super constructor will require an actor context, so we must also take that actor context as a parameter. The actor context is typed with the top level of the commands that the actor can receive. Note that there are Scala DSL and Java DSL types. Since we are coding in Java in this case, we are using the Java DSL one. We just pass it, the context along to the super construct. Now to the factory method. Best practice is to call it create for Java. We hide the concrete type by making the factory return behavior. Our constructor needs the context, and we can get that through composition with behaviors.setup. Setup will provide us a context, and in return we must create an actual behavior from it. Now our actor is done. Let's quickly whip up a main class so that we have a runnable sample. I'm going to call it Hello World app. Actors always run inside of an actor system. So we need to create the actor system to run this actor. We'll call create to create the actor system from Java. It takes a root behavior and a name for the actor system. For the root behavior, we will provide our Hello World actor. In a real application, the root actor would bootstrap other actors, and one actor system would contain several actors. The system is also an actor f for the root f actor, so that is how we can interact with our actor. Let's send it a few messages. Finally, let's run the application so we can see that it works. You will notice that the application stays running and the actor stays running inside of it. We will have to forcefully kill it to stop the application. Thanks for listening to this short introduction. For more details, check out the documentation at akka.io.